Hello, everybody. I am Fiesel, and I'm here with Dwango AC. And as we get ready for Zellard's Punch Out Run, Punch Out We Run, uh, Dwango is going to demonstrate some of the ways that the technical aspects of this can be uh, demonstrated using the task tools. So we're going to use the task tools to step through Punch Out We and talk a little bit about some of the challenges that Zellard's going to face. So before we begin, um, what exactly is a task? and what do the task tools allow us to do? So I'm going to answer that question slightly out of order. First, a tool-assisted speedrun doesn't require this guy. This is Taskbot. You've seen him in a couple of events. He's our loyal mascot. He gets used when we're doing console verification, but uh, you don't actually need a Taskbot or anything like that in hardware to do what we're about to do today. A tool-assisted speedrun could best be defined as, a, as if it were a a piano roll in a playing piano. It's nothing more than a sequence of button presses that completes a game, similar to how a piano roll in a player piano is a sequence of notes being played to compose a song. So when you're, making, when you're doing something with a tool-assisted speed run, all you're really doing is giving yourself some tools to play the game in slow motion, one frame at a time, be able to back up anytime you make a mistake and try again. It gives you a lot of freedom to explore the game and see how it works. Well, uh, that's actually very helpful for a game that goes by so fast. Yes. And, <laughs> uh, and one of the nice things that you can also do in this is do things like see memory. You can uh, take a look at your input. You can set save states, roll back to those, those points in time, and try different possibilities. Yeah, but and the one thing I'd like to say, though, is you don't actually need to use any of those advanced techniques to take advantage of task tools. The simplest task tools are simply the ability to set a save state, put a marker in the sand of I want to be able to come back to this point, try some sequence of, of input, maybe try jumping over a Goomba if you're playing Super Mario Brothers, and just experiment. If you die or don't get a result you like, all you have to do is hit a, hit a single key, go back to where you started, and try again with a different set of input. And by that process, you can iteratively test very quickly Rather than a real time where you might have to get fairly far in a level, for instance, to try a certain trick, you can easily test something with that cycle. But you can also do it in slow motion or even a frame at a time, which is what we'll be doing, demonstrating here. And that is extremely powerful and very simple to learn. Yeah, that's sort of one of the basic operations of speedrunning is repeating a thing over and over again and trying different variations on it to see how that affects the outcome. And that's what we're going to see here. We're going to actually take a look at uh, one of the, the counterattacks against the Bald Bull 2 fight, um, which Zellard is going to have to try to, to get a one-frame trick to achieve uh, a successful counterattack and get a star out of the process. Right. And, and I'm going to first show you what it looks like to fail. So if, you, if it's possible to see it, in the very upper left corner of my screen, there's a very tiny number that says frame 52. That's how many frames I've gone since I started the save state. Uh, so I'm going to be moving uh, toward this guy. Uh, I don't want to get hit in the face, but I'm probably going to be. So I'm, I'm now going to punch him. I'm going to attempt to punch him right here. Unfortunately, he's going to absolutely clobber us. Now, one thing you can see here is every time I tap a key on my keyboard, we're advancing one frame. So you can see in slow motion our demise. Not exactly the most uh, fetching. So I'm going to press a key on my keyboard I've mapped to load state going to take us back in time to before that disastrous hit happened. And I'm going to hit the punch button, which I've mapped on my keyboard, one frame earlier and show you the difference. Just one frame earlier, and instead of us getting clocked, he gets clocked. And I'd also like to pay a note that there's a star there in the, uh, on, that we gained from that. If you are an, a frame early in this case, the result is not an instant knockout. But if, if you do it one frame early, you get this. You still punched him, but you didn't get the star. And he needs the star. So he has to hit a one frame window, which is 16.6 .6 milliseconds. It's a 60th of a second. It's pretty tight. Mm -hmm. Quite. And uh, it's interesting to see how um, the risk is different, whether you're early or late. And you know, in his case, he really wants the star if he wants to get the optimal strat. But it's not the end of the world if, if he manages to get the hit without getting the star. You just don't want to end up going too late and uh, getting clobbered. Right. And there's one other thing I'd point out here. So at this exact frame, in this case, I don't know if you can see it, it says frame 58. He turned red. Now, I don't know if he necessarily uses this particular mechanism, but if you, if you want, you can count frames and see how far it is from this visual cue that you need to take this action. So for instance, if we were to go uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is the eighth frame. Turns out I was off when I counted earlier. OK. <laughs> uh, we needed to hit him on the eighth frame after he turned red. And that gives you the star that you want. 
So that's the kind of stuff you would want to see. Um, yeah, you can get the idea. That's the kind of stuff you might want to use as a cue, as a visual cue. If you were practicing this on, uh, for a real-time run, you might get to this point and discover, oh, I need to be at exactly eight frames after he turns red. Maybe you're better off listening to an audible cue. I don't have audio turned on here, but maybe you're listening to an audio cue, uh, audible cue to be able to get your timing down. And you can use this in real-time runs to just to practice. It's a very, very fascinating and very useful technique, in my opinion. Yeah, a lot of speedrunners do uh, also dabble in tasking, or at least using the task tools, for purposes of trying to create better routes for their real-time runs. And it is interesting to see how this, uh, this sort of art form relates to actual speedrunning, or real-time speedrunning by humans. Well, there's a lot of symbiosis there. Early on, there was some antagonism with the task community and the RTA community because tool-assisted speedruns were not properly annotized and, and marked as being assisted speedruns, and that was bad. <laughs> but at this point, there's a great symbiosis where routing will contribute to what the tool-assisted speedrun starts with, and the techniques found in tool-assisted speedruns are often possible with real-time runs. And we now have this wonderful feedback loop that's just led to some absolutely outstanding tool-assisted speedruns, outstanding RTA runs. It's really cool seeing it. Yeah, it is great to see, because not only do this, does the task, inform, uh, the task community inform how speedrunners do their runs, but also speedrunners are just out there putting in the hours, putting in the time, and running through all these different variations and discovering a lot of things that they can then go to the task community with and say, hey, I have a recording of this crazy thing that happened. Can you guys break this down and figure out you know, exactly what was the, the technique behind it? Uh, so you see that back and forth all over the place. Exactly. All right, well, thank you very much, Wango, for talking with us and for showing us this demonstration here.